In this video we study the famous consensus problem in distributed systems. In particular, we will show that achieving consensus is impossible under certain conditions. We consider the standard model where distributed processes, called nodes, communicate by exchanging messages. There can be any number of nodes but we will consider a distributed system comprising four nodes as our example. The different nodes have some local state. For the sake of simplicity, we assume that the local state is simply a natural number. The goal is to agree on a single value. Let's start by defining the consensus problem more formally. We say that an algorithm solves the consensus problem if it has the following three properties. The first property is called agreement, which says that all nodes must decide on the same value whenever they decide. The second property is called validity. The algorithm has the validity property if the nodes decide on a value that is the input value of a node, that is, one node must have had this value at the beginning of the execution. Note that there are also different notions of validity, for example, if all nodes have the same input value, then the nodes must decide on this value. Lastly, the third property is called termination, which says that all nodes must eventually decide on a value. Note that satisfying any two of the three properties is not hard. If we drop the agreement property, each node can simply decide on its initial value. If we drop the validity property, each node can simply decide on a fixed value, for example, zero. Clearly, such a protocol is neither interesting nor useful. If we drop the termination property, we can come up with equally useless algorithms, for example, all nodes broadcast their values and decide on their input value if they receive exactly the same value from all other nodes. While it is easy to satisfy two out of the three properties, it is much harder, in some scenarios impossible to satisfy all three. In large wide area networks, such as the internet, it is not possible to guarantee that any message arrives within a certain fixed time. In this scenario, it is best if an algorithm does not depend on any assumptions when messages will arrive. Instead, an algorithm should simply react to messages when they do arrive. We call this the asynchronous communication model. In this model, a message may be delayed arbitrarily but it is delivered eventually, which then causes the receiving node to process it. It seems reasonable to assume that nodes cannot depend on messages arriving within a fixed time frame. Is it possible to solve consensus in this model? As it turns out, it is not. As long as it's possible that only one node may crash, no algorithm can guarantee that the nodes will reach consensus even if they just need to agree on a single bit. This result is often called the FLP theorem after the researchers, Fisher, Lynch and Patterson who proved this theorem. Let us now try to understand why consensus is impossible in this scenario. We introduce the concept of a configuration, which is the state of all nodes, together with all messages that are currently in transit, that is, all messages that have been sent but have not arrived yet. As mentioned before, reaching consensus is even impossible for binary input, so we only consider zeros and ones as input. When the next message is received, the state of the receiving node may change, the message is removed from the configuration, and new messages may be added if the receiving node sends messages after processing the received message. In this example, as soon as the remaining messages are received, the local states are all updated to zero and there are no messages left. This execution is successful in that termination was reached and all nodes agree on the same bit. We can display the transition from configuration to configuration with a tree where each child configuration is the result of a particular message that is received and processed next. In the example here, there are three messages in transit in configuration C0. Therefore, C0 has three child configurations. In the example, if the third message arrives next, the algorithm terminates with the decision value 0. Note that the messages that lead to the configuration C1 and C2 must also still be processed in configuration C3, but they are omitted here to keep things tidy, that is, we only show the child configurations if no decision is reached yet. Let's assume the rest of the tree looks like this. We say that any configuration where the decision value is clear, even if the nodes may not know it yet themselves, is univalent. More precisely, any configuration that leads to a decision of zero is called zero-valent. All the configurations that lead to a decision of one are called one-valent. Note that some configurations in this tree are not univalent. 
the decision depends on which messages are processed next. We call these configurations bivalent. Obviously, the goal is to transition from a bivalent configuration to a univalent configuration. But are there really bivalent configurations where the outcome is not yet determined? Let's look at an example. We consider n plus 1 possible initial configurations. In the first configuration, all nodes start with value 0. In the second configuration, only the first node starts with value 1. In the third configuration, only the first two nodes start with value 1 and so on. Since a correct consensus algorithm must satisfy the validity property, the first configuration must be zero-valent and the last configuration must be one-valent. Let's assume that all of these configurations are univalent. In that case, there must be at least one index where the switch from zero-valent to one-valent happens. What happens if messages to and from the node at that particular index are very slow? The other nodes cannot wait indefinitely for messages from that node because the algorithm wouldn't terminate if exactly this node crashed. So, the other nodes must decide on a value without hearing from that particular node. However, if they decided on zero but the value at this node is one, that would be a contradiction because we said that this configuration is one valent. Similarly, if the nodes decide on one but the value at this particular node is zero, this is a contradiction because the configuration is zero valent. We conclude from this that not all of these configurations can be univalent, which proves that bivalent configurations exist. The final piece of the puzzle are critical configurations. A critical configuration is a bivalent configuration that has univalent child configurations. These configurations are critical in the sense that the next message arrival will bring about a decision. When starting in a bivalent configuration, it is easy to see that termination is only guaranteed if the algorithm causes a transition to a critical configuration. In other words, if it is possible that the transition is always from a non-critical configuration to another non-critical configuration, the algorithm may never terminate or, if it terminates, the nodes may not agree on the decision value. Let's take a closer look at these transitions. In this example, there is a transition from C to C prime and then to C double prime, which is a zero-valent configuration. A transition is characterized by a particular message that a certain node receives, for example, node U receives message M. Now let's consider transitions to two different configurations and let's assume a different node received a message in the two transitions. These two child configurations may then transition to other configurations when the message that was received first in the other path is now also received. Since the messages were received on two different nodes, the transitions are independent and so it must be the case that the resulting configurations are identical. We are now ready to prove the main theorem. What we actually show is that a single node crash in a critical configuration can create a bivalent leaf. Since it is a leaf, there are no messages left to process, so either the algorithm stays in this state without terminating or the nodes decide but then may not agree on a value because the configuration is bivalent. So, showing that we can create a bivalent leaf proves the theorem. Let's consider a critical configuration, C. Since the configuration is critical, there must be a transition that leads to a zero-valent configuration. Moreover, there must be a transition that leads to a one-valent configuration. Let's assume that those transitions happen because messages are received on different nodes. If the other message is now received in the zero-valent configuration the resulting configuration must be zero-valent as well by definition. Likewise, any transition on a one-valent configuration must lead to another one-valent configuration. However, as we learned before, if messages are received by different nodes, we must get identical configurations. This is a contradiction because a configuration cannot be both zero-valent and one-valent. So, we conclude that the two transitions must happen on the same node. However, this is not all. It is easy to see that this is true for all transitions that happen on a critical configuration as otherwise we get the same contradiction. So, there is a specific node U where all transitions happen when the system is in a critical configuration. Let's now look at the whole configuration tree, starting with an initial configuration C0. After some transitions, the system is in the critical state C. All transitions in this state happen on some node U. 
If this particular node fails, no more transitions are possible and the system remains in this bivalent state. We conclude that a single node crash can create a bivalent leaf, which proves the theorem. Let's summarize what we've learned in this video. We introduce the consensus problem with the three properties agreement, validity and termination. We then learned that the problem cannot be solved in the asynchronous model for any deterministic algorithm even if at most one node fails. This is a fundamental result in distributed computing as it implies that either algorithms must resort to non-determinism or stronger assumptions about the communication model are needed. Thanks for watching.